the book of Obadiah chapter 1, starting from verse 1, reading from the NLT. It says, this is the vision that the sovereign Lord, Yahweh revealed to Obadiah concerning the land of Edom. Everywhere the so-called white man lives, yes, the land of Edom. But this one particular land is referring to America. It says, we have heard a message from the Lord hmm, that an ambassador was sent to the nations to say, hear what the nations are saying. It says here, get ready everyone. Let's assemble our armies and attack Edom. You hear that? It says, the Lord says to Edom, I will cut you down to size among the nations. You will be greatly despised. You hear that? You hear what the Lord is saying? Family, let's take it back. Let's take it back. The book of Obadiah, this is the NLT version. Hmm? It says Obadiah, his family is only one book. But it's referring to the so-called white man. That's right. It says here, this is the vision that the sovereign Lord, who is the Lord? Yahweh, the name that our forefathers call upon. Yes, the sovereign Lord, the omnipotent. Yes, the ancient of days. He has no beginning and he has no ending. That's right, the sovereign Lord. Hear what he said. It says here, this is the vision that the sovereign Lord, Yahweh revealed to Obadiah the prophet concerning who? The land of Edom. We have heard a message from the Lord Yahweh that an ambassador was sent to the nations to say, get ready, everyone, let's assemble our armies and attack Edom. The Lord Yahweh says to Edom, I will cut you down to size among the nations, you will be greatly despised. You have been deceived by your own pride because you live in a rock fortress and make your home high in the mountains. Who can ever reach us way up here? You ask boastfully. But even if you soar as high as eagles and build your nest among the stars, I will bring you crashing down, says the Lord. Oh, Esau, Edom, you are in trouble. Let's begin this lesson by giving honor and glory to our power. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Shai, Bahashem, Rekakodash. Yahweh is our heavenly father's name. The one the world ignorantly called God. Yes, his name is Yahweh. Simply means he is in the Hebrew tongue. And his only begotten son, our king, the king of Israel. That's right. The beginning and the ending. That's right. He is the only begotten of our power, Yahweh. Yes, the first spirit created, the creator of the heaven and the earth. Yahweh Shai, the conquering lion from the tribe of Judah, coming in his glory. All praises, honor, and glory to our power, Yahweh. And his only begotten son, our king, Yahweh Shai. To you, the hopeful elect, I say, Shalom, family. This word here, family, oh, it makes you want to break out dancing. All oh, praises, honor, and glory to our power, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Especially when the prophecies are jumping off the pages. We are witnessing uh, the fall of a kingdom, an empire. You know what that means? The moment America, family, America goes down, it is Yahweh Shai's kingdom. Again, it's not going to be Russia, it's not going to be China, it's not going to be India, it's not going to be a multipolar world is going to be Yahweh Shai's kingdom. All praises, honor, glory to our power, Yahweh. Bahashem, Yahweh, Bahashem. Family, let's get into it. This is an, a clip from RT. Family, I came across it. And family, let's edify the flock. That's what Yahweh Shai says. He says, feed my flock. Here, family, when we see these things here, we filter it through the Holy Scriptures. It's all about prophecy because the king, Yahweh himself said, he says what? The testimony of our king, Yahweh is the spirit of prophecy. All praises, honor, and glory to our power, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh for putting this beautiful song in our mouth. Speak, family, we are singing the song of the kingdom. That's right. This gospel here, family, money cannot buy it. This is directly from our power, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Let's go. 
President Xi's visit to Moscow testifies quite clearly to the robust friendship and partnership between the two countries. Western powers have long feared such an alliance and tried to prevent it. RT's Steve Sweeney explains. Chinese President Xi Jinping has arrived in Russia to the alarm of the United States and other Western countries. Days before he landed, the International Criminal Court issued an arrest warrant against President Vladimir Putin in what some have seen as a politically motivated move to undermine the deep ties between the two nations. But the bond between Russia and China is strong. They share close links in the economic, scientific and military spheres. The partnership in the BRICS alliance and the Shanghai Cooperation Organization is deepening. Washington has long opposed Russia-China relations, which it views as a threat to a US-dominated unipolar world. Here's a reminder of some of its previous statements. Around the world, we face rogue regimes, terrorist groups, and rivals like China and Russia that challenge our interests, our economy, and our values. In confronting these horrible dangers, we know that weakness is the surest path to conflict, and unmatched power is the surest means to our true and great defense. You can't call them our friends if they're building weapons that can destroy the United States of America, and therefore we have to develop the capability to respond. Russia and China were also criticized for using their respective positions on the UN Security Council to defend Syria's sovereignty. We need to change the attitude of the Russian and Chinese governments. They must understand they are setting themselves against the aspirations not only of the Syrian people, but of the entire Arab Spring, the Arab awakening. But it was Washington that spent $1 billion in Operation Timber Sycamore, a covert CIA program to arm and train Syrian rebels to oust President Assad. The US, which has launched at least 251 military interventions since 1991, according to its own government sources, stands accused of hypocrisy. Both China and Russia, and this is right out in the national security strategy, are two countries that are chafing against this international rules-based order that the United States and so many of our allies and partners have built up since the end of World War II. Beijing, like Moscow, seeks a world where might makes right where disputes are resolved by force and where autocrats can stamp out the flame of freedom. It is almost as if Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Chile, Nicaragua and the countless other US invasions and involvement in coups against democratically elected governments never happened. And as if Washington doesn't have hundreds of military bases surrounding China while flooding Taiwan with arms. World powers toughen their stance against China and Russia when NATO identified Beijing as a systemic challenge to Euro-Atlantic security and accused the pair of undermining global stability. There's just no question that the China and Russia are both working to divide the transatlantic partners, and we are now very aware, we all have a deeper appreciation of those efforts and are intent on addressing them. The deepening strategic partnership between the People's Republic of China and the Russian Federation and their mutually reinforcing attempts to undercut the rules-based international order run counter to our values and interests. Returning to today, Washington has ramped up the rhetoric, warning of the defense and security links between the two countries, with the US saying, without providing evidence, that China was preparing to send arms to Russia to use in the conflict in Ukraine. We are very concerned that China is considering providing lethal support to Russia in its aggression against Ukraine. But it is China that has outlined a 12-point peace plan for Ukraine, while the West has undermined and opposed negotiations. Beijing was quick to hit back at Washington, saying China-Russia relations are now more important than ever. It is the US side, not the Chinese side, that is supplying a steady stream of weapons to the battlefield. The US side is not qualified to dictate to the Chinese side. We also never accept the US dictating or even coercing pressure on Sino-Russian relations. The more unstable the world becomes, the more imperative it is for China and Russia to steadily advance their relations. While Russia has accused Washington of pressing the West to adopt a hostile approach to the two nations. 
in order to pursue their course of domination, primarily in the interest of containing Russia and China. The Americans lack their own forces, which is why they need what they are doing now, not a partial but a complete mobilization of the Western camp. Our relationship with the People's Republic of China, of course, is going through absolutely the best times in the history of this relationship. Our leaders say so. You remember how these relations were characterized by our Chinese friends in their time, that it is not an alliance, but in many ways it is stronger than an alliance. That alliance has seen the two countries develop stronger economic ties, with trade increasing by nearly 30 percent to a record $190 billion in 2022. Relations even extend to outer space, with Beijing and Moscow inking a cooperation deal which lasts until 2027. As talks between the two leaders are expected to see more agreements, it is clear that the more the West tries to drive a wedge between Russia and China, the stronger their ties become. For more, oh, praises on and glory to our power, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, by Hashem, Rekakodaj. Family, are you excited or what? Eh? We are extremely excited because we know that our king is coming. Eh? Our king is coming. Why? Because, family, the signs are everywhere. The signs are everywhere. It's everywhere. All praises, honor, glory to our power. Let's continue with Obadiah chapter 1, starting from verse 7 this time. The family says here, hmm? it says, all your allies will turn against you. Hmm? They will help to chase you from you. From, oh, sorry. They will help to chase you from your end and they will promise you peace while plotting to deceive and destroy you. That's the time that we are living in. Yes, his own allies. Remember the book of Revelation 17, I think 16, where it says what? His own, lies, his own allies are going to turn and shoot missile at her. That time is coming. It says here, Obadiah chapter 1, verse 7. It says, all your allies will turn against you. They will help to chase you from your end and they will promise you peace while plotting to deceive and destroy you. Your trusted friends will set traps for you and you won't even know about it. At that time, not a single wise person will be left in the whole eh, land of Edom, says the Lord Yahweh. Eh? For on the mountains of Edom, I will destroy everyone who has understanding. Mm. The mighty warriors of Timon, German, will be terrified and everyone on the mountains of Edom will be cut down in the slaughter. You hear that? That is what is coming for. Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America and all the various places that Esau, Edom reside. That's the judgment that the Lord is bringing. Mm -hmm. Because with what what end up happening is people forget who is ruling in this kingdom, right? Over and over again, we tell you that a man's going. Let's bring the precept out because we are here to lift up the name of our power, Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. He's been disrespected. Nobody thinks about Yahweh, the creator of the heaven and the earth, his only begotten son. Nobody gives them reverence. But we are here to tell you that the Lord is bringing judgment to the land. No, the Lord is not pleased with the way you've taken care of the land. There is a new rulership coming. Yes, because look at the state of the earth. Nobody is safe under this rulership. So the king is bringing judgment. First, first he's coming to redeem his elect. He's not coming to save everybody. But let's go to the book of Daniel quickly. The book of Daniel. I have another article to share with you, family. This is not going to be long. The book of Daniel, chapter 4, verse 17. It says here, I've brought this out many times. But family, it seems like I have to bring it out to remind people who is ruling this kingdom. It says, Daniel, chapter 4, verse 17. It says, this matter hmm, is by the decree of the watchers. Everybody's the watchers. Yes. Amen. Hey? It says, end the demand by the word of the holy ones. And the watchers, you have the watchers, family, your leaders, the one watching over you, your president, and your mayors. And 
He says here, and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living hmm, may know that the most high, who is the most high? Yahweh. And eh? ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over it the basis of men. The basis of men are the one ruling the world right now. Low, moral, yeah. Yes, family, look at the state of the world. Look at the state. Look at France today. Everywhere is on fire. Because family, we are living in the last days. But here, in case I need to bring this up, let's go to the book of Proverbs chapter 20. Hmm? Proverbs 20 quickly. It says, verse 24, what is 24? It says here, Men's going are of the Lord. Eh? How can a man then understand his own way? Eh? All these presidents, prime ministers, family, it is the Lord that put them there. Because Putin, President Putin, President Z, they all have a major role to play in prophecy because Babylon the Great at the end has to be taken down as, as, as foretold in the book of Ezekiel chapter 38 and uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, Isaiah 34, Jeremiah 51, yes. Revelation 18, yes. Babylon has to be taken down. And these are the nations that are gathering together. That so-called multipolar world, yes. These are the guys coming together to take Babylon the Great. But they are not going to rule. Oh no, they are not going to rule. Absolutely not. Let's go to the book of Psalm, family. The book of Psalm, chapter 75. Again, just let's, uh, let's prove this point and then we'll move on. The book of Psalm, verse 7, it says here. But our power is the judge. He putteth down one. You hear that? He putteth down one and setteth up another. Right? Nobody is ruling. If you are ruling, it is the Lord that put you there. And now he's about to set his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. Family, that's why we are ushering in the kingdom of heaven. Yahweh Shai's kingdom is the one following Esau's kingdom. This is Esau's rulership, right? Like it says in the book of 2 Ezra chapter 6 verse 9, Esau is the end of the world and uh, Jacob is the one to follow. Yahweh Shai's kingdom. The Israelites, the so-called Latinos, blacks, Native Americans. Yes, it is going to be a big surprise. Because it's hard for you to see this so-called Negroes, yes, Latinos, Native American, African American ruling over you. But that's how the Lord operates. The Lord is all about the underdog. Hmm? It's not anything that we have done to deserve this grace. This, 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 this mercy that the Lord is about to pour upon us. Oh no, this is a, a gift. Hmm? This is a gift. And we are very grateful, very thankful to have this truth. The fact that we, the so-called Latinos, Negroes, African Americans, eh, about to rule this kingdom with our King Yahweh Shai, we are forever grateful, forever thankful to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rukakudash. Yes. That's what Yahweh Shai promised. He's gonna, <laughs> he is going to share the entire earth with us. And that is what is coming. Let's bring up a, a, a quick article for me. This is not going to be long. This is not going to be long. Um, it's just we are living in a sighting time. This is here. It's break, this is breaking news right now. Family, I was, going to get, I was trying to find another article just to confirm it. But, you know, this just broke. Uh, apparently, breaking news. It says China to officially arm Russia if Kiev, meaning Ukraine, refuse peace plan. It says China will officially join Iran to arm Russia if Kiev does not accept the Chinese peace plan. That is the information coming directly from China delegation accompanying President Xi Jinping during his ongoing state visit to Russia. Xi is expected to call Ukraine President Zelensky later this week, perhaps from Moscow during Xi's state visit. Washington's response was like lightning. Hear that? You, see, you hear that? Washington, eh? USA, Babylon the Great. He says, respond was like lightning. 
the free world officially rejects China peace plan for Ukraine. You know what that means? You see, fam, you see how the Lord operates? Excuse me. Eh? Offici- they don't want peace. You know why? Because it is the Lord. Remember what he did to Pharaoh before he got us out of Egypt? He hardened Pharaoh's heart. So anytime Moses goes there and says, let my people go, what did the Lord, what did uh, Pharaoh say? No, 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 I'm not going to let them go. And then the Lord will bring more plagues, right? Ten different plagues. That's how the Lord operates. He's doing the same thing here, family. They could just say, okay, you know what, we don't want to fight Russia. But no, they want a piece of Russia and they're going to get it. Or praises, honor, and glory to our power, Yahweh, family. This is a exciting time to be alive. It says here, Washington responds like lightning. It says the free world. Eh? If you think America is free, man, I got a bridge to sell you. Eh? <laughs> Rejects China peace plan for Ukraine. Eh? China ceasefire initiative is an attempt to give Russia time to launch a new offensive. The White House. Eh? Yes, family. Here's an update. 1036 AM says the Pentagon may soon announce measure for the possible delivery of Abram tank to Ukraine earlier than expected. White House spokesman John Kirby said. So family, at the end of the day, they won that third world war. Because right now, the bank system is collapsing. The nations are walking away from the dollar. Something just popped in my spirit family. I must well bring it up. This is from Moon of Alabama. It says, geopolitical rumbling leave U.S. behind. This, do you see that? It says, this is from Moon of Alabama. It says, geopolitical rumbling leave U.S. behind. No. It is the Lord. You see? Yahweh, this time, eh? This time when it's all said and done, everybody's going to know when the missiles hit America, everybody's going to know that it is the Lord Yahweh that did it. Yes. And then in the midst of that, the king is going to show up. When the king shows up, all these nations are going to put their differences aside. Like it says in the book of 2 Ezra chapter 13. You read that? Everything is clear as mud, family. And that's why we are excited. Because we know that we are very close. Yes. The American dollar is collapsing. The, nation, the Middle East family, they are trying to what? Finally live like neighbors they are trying to make peace mm-hmm. but remember what the law says when he said the sudden he said when they say peace and safety sudden destruction america is not going to sit back and take it family that is not going to happen they are dollar they are losing the uh the uh the power the 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 the, the, the uh what is it called uh, uh the dollar being the the reserve currency for the world they are losing their hegemony their power around the world no, family, this is going to force them to go to war. They know they can't take on China and Russia, but family, it is the Lord's movie. He's going to put the spirit on them to do his will. And the Lord, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai is going to be lifted up high and going to be glorified. That's what this is all about. He says here, geopolitical rumbling leave U.S. behind. Over the last month, we have seen astonished geopolitical development. In February, China publicly lambasted U.S. hegemony, launched a global security initiative, and offered peace plan for Ukraine. March 10, China mediated an agreement which restored relationship between Saudi Arabia and Iran. You see, you hear American name being mentioned anywhere? Nope. Let's continue. On March 15, Moscow rolled out the red carpet for the Syrian President Bashar Assad. You hear that? Everybody's what? Moving towards what? The multipolar world. The family, it is to take down the beast system. America and the West. That's what is, this is where everything is leading. Because this is what is written in the Bible. Because our power, Yahweh, he is the only power that declares the end from the beginning. Okay? Let's continue. It says, yes, yesterday, Al-Sad and his wife, Asma, arrived in the UAE for talks with Sheikh Muhammad. Remember, these nations were not, they were not at peace. Hmm? This is what is happening. All of a sudden, Russia, China, working behind the scenes, trying to bring all these nations together. Because America, when America was in charge, it was just, it's just war. War, war, war. Stealing, pillaging, raping. That's what they know. That's all they know. 
That's what they know, family. They did that in Iraq. Look at the state. It's today, at yesterday was the 20th anniversary of the Iraq war. Look at the state of Iraq today. And that's what America, that's what democracy brings you. Yes. That's why, family, the Lord is about to remove them. Because this can continue. And that's why you see all these nations now coming together to form alliance. Eh? Together, what? You're strong and then divided, you conquered or something to that effect. Yeah, you know? A house divided cannot stand. Now you're seeing all the countries in the Middle East coming together. Because when they were divided, America would come in there, you know, create terrorists, uh, it create all these, uh, what is it called, uh, factions. And then you find yourself fighting against your neighbor. That's what they do. That's what they do. That's why it says, Ye ye awad. He says, uh, Obadiah, uh, Obadiah 1 tells you, eh? all, the, uh, all the people that were at peace with you have brought you to what? Eh? I will bring that, we will finish off with Obadiah again. Family, I love the book of Obadiah. Let's continue. It says here, also here yesterday, Al-Sad and his wife Asma arrived in the UAE for talk with Sheikh Mohammed. Also yesterday, Iran and Iraq, listen to this. Iran and Iraq, remember, it was America that supplied Iraq, Iraq with a chemical weapon during uh, Saddam Hussein's uh, reign, and then they went against Iran. You see, now fam, listen to this. Also, yesterday, Iran and Iraq signed a security cooperation agreement that will stop the CIA-sponsored Kurdish activities against Iran. Are you listening to this? Family, there's no power like Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. There's no power. Like our power, the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You see what is happening right now? That shows you the time that we are living in. The moment America falls, family, is the kingdom of heaven on this planet Earth. That's right. Yahweh Shai's kingdom. He says here, also yesterday, Iran and Iraq signed security cooperation agreement. That will stop the sea. I just read that. Also yesterday, King Salman of Saudi Arabia invited the president of Iran to a visit in Riyadh. A family, you hear that? Because uh, what's the name? China just broke a, a peace deal between uh, Saudi and Iran. Now, the, pres the, the king of Saudi Arabia just invited the president of Iran. You see what is happening, family? You see what is happening? It says here, for the last 30 years, the U.S. considered the Middle East as its backyard. 20 years ago, it illegally invaded Iraq and caused 100,000 of death and decades of chaos. No, no, no. It's almost close to like 500,000. Okay? Now, China, by peaceful means, changed the balance in the Middle East within just one month. Today, China's President Xi arrived in Moscow for three days of talks with Russia's President Putin. An article by President Putin was published in the People's Daily while Russia media published a signed article by President Xi. The U.S. is afraid that China's peace initiative for Ukraine will gain ground. It has openly come out against a ceasefire and peace talk. No, because America don't want peace. How are they going to make money? Money, war for them is money. America don't want peace. Eh? That's why it says, it says what? You are high. Actually, let's bring up Obadiah. Let's go to the book of Obadiah. It says, Obadiah 1. It says here, it says, Obadiah 1, 2. It says here, behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Small what? Insignificant. Eh? That's how the nations are seeing you right now. That's why they're all talking behind your back. You know what I mean? You see, at one point, you had the power. You were going around just destroying, killing, removing leaders and putting puppet governments in place so you can pillage the nations. Yes, but now listen to what the Lord is saying. He says, Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. Look up that word. Despised. You are hated. Because they know that when you show up in their backyard, guess what? It's over for them. And now, when Russia, China are bringing peace, eh? now look at you now. Eh? Look at you. You are losing your throwing tantrum. You know, you don't want no peace. You know, look at you. You're looking, you're looking pathetic. You're looking really pathetic. Eh? You ruled. You've destroyed the world. Now, just make way. Make way. Don't worry. You're going to see the righteous kingdom soon. It says here, 
The U.S. is afraid that China peace initiative for Ukraine will gain ground. It has openly come out against a ceasefire. You hear that? Openly come out against a ceasefire, meaning peace and peace talk. I had thought that was for Ukraine to decide. No, it was not Ukraine to decide. America ran Ukraine. And Ukraine is just a vassal state. It is likely that Putin will publicly endorse the Chinese peace plan while the U.S. is paranoid. That peace might indeed happen. It may even want to sabotage the Saudi-Iranian deal. No, America is finished. That's right. You can put a fork in it because the Lord already declared it. It is finished. And Babylon, everybody is going to see Babylon on fire. Uh, family, we're going to leave it there. We're going to leave it there. I hope you edify, family. Yes, America, you are highly despised. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Lord said he has made you small, insignificant. That's why you're seeing all these nations right now forming alliance and eh, talking behind your back and you feel like you're losing power. Yeah, your power is gone because it's the Lord. He rules in the kingdom of men and gives to whomsoever. He set a bound for you and he said you cannot pass it. There's no way. That's it. Your rulership is finished. Yahweh Shai is coming, family. Prepare your heart for it. Prepare your heart for it. But before he comes, this place literally is going to be on fire. You know, but family, continue to pray, pray, up, pray, 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 pray. Trust in the process. The king is coming. The Lord said he's going to be a, our guide in those days. Oh, yeah, he said it. Second book of Ezra, chapter 16, verse 72 up. It tells you, it says he is going to be our guide. He says, have no doubt. You see? Continue to call upon his name, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. That's the only name that's going to get us out of this place. Okay, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. The king and his only begotten, our power, Yahweh, and his only begotten, which is our king, Yahweh Shai, who's going to be among us on this planet, making sure that he return this planet to the way it used to be, just like the Garden of Eden. That's right. That's what this is all about. The earth needs a new rulership and it's not going to be Russia, it's not going to be China, it's not going to be India, it's not going to be a multipolar world. It's going to be Yahweh Shai, our king's kingdom. With that, I will say Shalom, or praises, honor and glory to our power, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekha Shalom, beloved.